If you can draw cubes, you can pretty much get the foundation of drawing most objects because you can put cubes into many structures. For example, there's many things that I could draw on my table here that if I can draw a cube, I'll be able to draw them quite accurately, including the table itself. So you may already know a way to draw cubes that you might have been taught in maths. So that would be, if I've used my grid paper here, um, start off with the front square of the cube. So let's see, I'm going to go. What you're not learning from that is perspective. And perspective is um, a method of drawing that shows how things appear to get smaller as they get further away. OK, so first form for this is one point perspective. So with one point perspective, we would start by drawing a very light horizon line. So like the horizon of a landscape. OK, and in that somewhere we'll put a vanishing point. Which will make sense a bit later when I speak about it. So we're going to do one point perspective. So with that, we'll draw the front of our boxes, just like I did in the last example. And they're just going to be like drawing a flat square. So I'm not going to worry about the size. I'm going to draw one under the um, under the horizon line. Draw one right on the horizon line. And we'll do another one uh, above the horizon line. Okay. So the next part is to draw some converging lines, and this will be the sides of our boxes. So if something's going to converge, it's when something comes together. So where I mean converging lines, I mean from every single point of our square, we're going to draw a line to the vanishing point. Now I need to make sure these lines are very light because I'm going to be rubbing out parts of them later. OK, so that's probably too dark there. So a good thing to think of is draw it light until you get it right. OK, I'm going to do this off the other ones as well. So I've got my converging lines going to the vanishing point off into the distance. So you can already see how with the box it gets smaller as it goes further away. But at the minute, these look like big, long, long cuboids or it could look like um, buildings going off into the distance. So our next thing to do would be to add uh, sides to our cubes. So I can draw a parallel line to my square edge there and another parallel line to my square edge there. And I've got a cube, so I will get a rubber. And now I can get rid of my, my guidelines, my converging lines. Tidy that up. OK, I'll do the same up with this one. So parallel. And then parallel to this one. And then parallel to this one, do I want it to be a shallow box, long box? Let's make it long. OK, I've got three cuboids, three cubes from different angles. Um, what you should try now is maybe adding um, some light and some shadow to it. So I could pretend I've got some light coming from up here. So maybe it's a little bit of sunlight. So first off, with a cube, you'd want to understand which side of it the sunlight directly hits, which side would be completely in shadow and which side might be having a little bit of light, but not as so much. So for this box, it's quite easy. The sun would be coming directly onto there, meaning that that would be the brightest part. So I'm going to leave that unshaded. Now, the darkest part for this one is probably likely to be this one because it's furthest away from the light. So I'll put my pencil on my side and shade it. OK, and so this side, I think we'd still have some light that came over, but not as much, 
not as much as there and a little bit more than that. So I will just really lightly shade in there. Okay, so on this one, now the brightest amount of light would be going on the side there. So I think ooh, this part would probably be the darkest. So. So I've got three different boxes, all sorted into perspective, fading off smaller into the distance by using a vanishing point, horizon and converging lines. <laughs> 